Hello, hello, more dimmers here and welcome to the last day, final day of the Opera Euro Rapid 2021 online tournament. Magnus Carlsen with the black pieces in the first game against Wesley So, who open uh, E4. We have c5, so Sicilian defense, knight f3, knight c6, and now uh, Wesley so didn't choose to go for the most popular open Sicilian, but he went for bishop b5, Nezmedinov Rosolimo attack. Uh, we have e6, so Magnus sticks to the theory he knows, and he played the open. We have the castle, we have knight g to e7, and now we have c3. Uh, c3 making a space for the bishops in some variations, and also uh, preparing, of course, d4. We have a6. a6 is the is the quite old line. Magnus played that in 2009 and with the white pieces, with the black pieces, so definitely he knows what he is doing. We have bishop a4, b5 and now bishop c2. And here in 2009, Magnus went for d5, but here we have bishop b7. And Magnus knows that position. He played that couple of times against Teimur Rajabov. Also in 2009, this system was very, very popular, um, you know, 12 years ago. We have rook e1 and now rook c8. We have a4 challenging these pawns on the queen side, uh, which looks like, you know, took a lot of space there. We have b4, Magnus avoiding exchange. Uh, and now we have d4 strike in the center and this position is a very very interesting uh, black has a lot of chances and it's gonna determine what kind of the position Magnus Carlsen choose. The most popular move here is actually b takes on c3 and after d5 c takes on b2 bishop b2 knight goes to b4. So we still have you know about 20 games in the in the public database so definitely well known position. Uh, a little bit sharp, a little bit sharp as you already see um, a lot of things happening here. But black has some interesting counterplay here. However, Magnus went for c takes on d4, c takes on d4. And here black has a choice between d5 and knight g6. This is what we have in the database. Now d5 probably would lead to the uh, to the e5 and if white too likes to play advanced French variation, it should be pretty comfortable to play uh, with the bishop already on this diagonal. Um, so if you know the, the plans, how to play against the French defense, um, this French defense is not ideal. The, the, the bishop here is, is, you know, looking at d5 and so on. So not that great. So Magnus uh, went for knight g6 first and see what's gonna happen. We have one game in the database where bishop e3 was played. Very logical move because this knight gonna jump to d2. So at least the bishop gonna be out already. However, Wesley so said that this bishop uh, is okay on c1 and he played knight b to d2. Uh, and now Magnus went for knight a5, opening the diagonal for the bishop, maybe preparing some kind of attack. Uh, but at the same time, this knight is a little bit misplaced. If the action is, uh, you know, uh, gonna happen on the king side, that gonna be very, very difficult. Dangerous. And indeed, Wesley played g3. So whenever you see the knight on g6, this is misplaced knight. Knight should stay on the f6. If it's on the on, on g6, it always can fall into this attack, h4, h5. So g3, of course, is preparing. We have bishop e7, Magnus taking under control h4, and now we have h4. And now the problem is that Magnus could go for the for the castle and then after h5 uh, go with the knight to h8. But let's face it, like uh, Magnus is not the kind of person who would love to play this position. So definitely uh, that's not for him. If he played d5, he would get again to the same position, you know, h5 is coming and now he have to go for for this move, maybe h6, maybe bring the knight this way. It was also played in the past with the different move order. Um, however, in this position, Magnus decided that he gonna just sacrifice the piece for two pawns and look for the chances in the sharp game against the, the king. So we have bishop h4. And now how to continue that by Wesley. So Wesley have a couple of choices. He choose actually to exchange as many pieces as possible here. Uh, G takes on h4, knight h4, knight h4, queen h4, uh, and now rook e3. 
Uh, and now in this position, what was the idea? Because it's very difficult to find how Magnus Carlsen want to continue the attack. And he played f5. f5 is of course free attack on the on the pawn on the e4. The pawn cannot be taken, the pawn cannot be pushed, of course, because we have the checkmate here. So what would you play in this position with the white pieces? This is very important because you have only one way to continue uh, to get the advantage in this position. So you can actually pause the video and think about what would you play next. It's not like, you know, winning tactic. It's a very important, you know, positional move while I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? So the only move which still keep a lot of tensions is actually rook g3. Rook g3 uh, focusing on the g7 uh, and then after castle with Magnus Carlsen played uh, because Wesley went for the strongest move in this position, knight f3. Knight f3 kicking the queen. So Magnus went queen h5 and now the killer move here is knight e5. Now, knight e5 forcing black to actually exchange the queens, and once the queens are exchanged, all the attack disappear, all the attack vanish. There is no option that the queen can do something else. Queen h4 goes for the bishop g5, trapping the queen. The queen is trapped here. A queen e8 and position of black is like completely unplayable. White gonna have very strong attack here and it's very difficult to even imagine that black gonna have any counter play, uh, counterplay. So that's why queen d1 is forced, bishop d1 and now d6 kicking the knight. Knight goes back to d3. Now we have f takes on e4 kicking the knight, knight b4 uh, and now knight c4. Now knight c4 bringing the, the knight close closer um, to the king's position, of course, but also create some some maybe maybe a5 could be played uh kicking the, the the knight because this knight is actually controlling d5 which can be uh important in some of the variations so magnus carlsen is actually uh following that very very carefully a lot of lines are calculated here uh but wesley so went for a5 not only blocking this a5 move but also setting up very interesting trap because it looks like magnus could take this pawn because the rook is a defender of the bishop the problem is uh if the knight is taken then black gonna win two of the of the bishops so king f1 let's say rook d1 and black gonna win that game with two extra pawns so you know you cannot play that but white also have another move bishop h6 bishop h6 and now the problem is now also g7 is uh is attacked if black didn't defend it then of course the knight is is gone rook c to f8 let's say uh, if the rook goes to the to the c1 we of course have the bishop controlling c1 so that's not possible if somebody forgets uh but white can also double the the rooks on the g file and they are gonna be faster in the attack if g6 is played then the rook of course is lost so that's not even possible also look at this knight this knight is actually anti octopus knight we know that octopus knight controls a lot of squares but this could be called anti octopus knight because there is no good moves the knight gonna be lost wherever it moves um, and finally cannot move to the to the d6 so this is why magnus played d5 making a space for the knight but at the same time closing the bishop so magnus just lost the bishop it's gonna be completely inactive on the b7 uh, we have bishop g4 now attacking this pawn and now if rook c to e8 which actually is the best move in the position defending that then um, white gonna very simple just continue the game let's say rook c to e2 and if knight d6 trying to get the knight to the nice position like f5 uh, then let's say knight e3 and wesley will be happy to exchange the knights and get the two bishops against one bishop Shop. so let's let's just imagine that you have one extra piece and black doesn't even have any counterplay here so not even possible magnus however went for rook f6 and i would like you to pause the video one more time and just win this game against magnus carlsen uh, after this series of moves magnus carlsen just resign uh, so pause the video while i enjoy my cup of tea 
Okay, ready? Uh, this move is not really difficult. Bishop g5 is coming, trapping the rook. If the rook actually moves somewhere, then of course um, this pawn is gonna fall, this pawn gonna fall. So as you already see, this knight on b4 was not in hurry um, to move to c2 to, to, to e3. However, if knight is going there, then why not? Uh, but in this position, of course, um, Magnus tries to stay with the rook on the on the sixth rank just to still defend e6. But after bishop h5, his rook is trapped. He play rook g5, rook g5, and in this position he resigned. And he resigned because he is down the whole rook. So whole rook, of course. Magnus is too serious player to place, uh, you know, being rook down um, against Wesley. So where his position doesn't even give any chances, this bishop doesn't exist and, and so on. So this was the game number one. We also have another three games. All of them ended with a draws. So Magnus Carlsen had a lot of chances actually to win that, but he said in the interview that he didn't trust his instincts and in the critical moments he trusts uh, Wesley that he knows what he is doing and as Wesley is one of the strongest, you know, rapid player uh, in the world. Uh, some people say that's number, number two in the world. He definitely is also strong in the in the blitz time control, especially five minutes games. But as we already see uh, in this 15 minutes, he's also extremely, extremely strong. So Magnus didn't trust his instincts. He trusted uh, Wesley's so cal calculations. And as you already see, that's what happened. Uh, Magnus just drew three another games. Even he had his chances. He was pretty much disappointed. He was not disappointed that he lost that game, but that he didn't. Uh, you know, use his chances with, where he had two chances uh, to win. So as you see, Wesley so won. So congratulations to Wesley. He won yet another tournament in the final against uh, Magnus Carlsen. And also in the match for the third place, Maxim Vashel Lagraf lost against Teymur Rajabov, but that was that's what happened. That's another story. Uh, that was the basic end game uh, and. Maxime Vachel Lagraf, for some reason, nobody knows this is the mouse sleep or he was just tired and uh, bored of that game, but he just very, very carelessly went into the basic end game. One pawn which Teymur Rajabov had a winning um, the position. So uh, Teymur Rajabov got the third place and Maxime Vachel Lagraf fourth place. So that's all for today and that's all for the Opera Euro Rapid 2021 tour tournament and if you like this video press like if for some reason you don't like it press unlike and if you want to see more games on my channel press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one